Welcome to Growing Chatham, North Carolina Cooperative Extension, Chatham County Center's February 2022 podcast. I'm Tiffany Hancock. Our 4-H team would like to remind you that it is annual enrollment time. 4-H Online 2.0 is the online enrollment and registration system for North Carolina 4-H. This is where you enter family and individual information that is used by your county and the state 4-H program to manage and record your participation in the 4-H Youth Development Program. If you encounter issues with your re-enrollment, please email Liz Malney with your specific issues, and we will work to correct the problem immediately. The North Carolina 4-H Online 2.0 resource website is available to help answer many questions that you may encounter with 4-H Online 2.0. We look forward to your 2022-2023 enrollment and all of the North Carolina 4-H opportunities headed your way from Chatham County 4-H. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to access the links for the 4-H Online 2.0 resources, the link to the 4-H enrollment page, or Liz's contact information. Summer will be here before you know it. Now is the time to start completing applications for summer programs, such as the Horticultural Science Summer Institute. Applications are now being accepted. Join North Carolina State's professional plant geeks in the horticulture department for a week of hands-on fun. Consider coming to the Horticulture Science Summer Institute July 10th through the 15th, 2022. This in-person residential pre-college program is an action-packed week of plant propagation, tree climbing, chromosome squashing, and friend making. Applications are open on North Carolina State University's reporter system. Families, you will need to create a Brickyard account, and we will welcome all high school youth to apply. What's accepted? Camp registration is $650 plus scholarships are available for 4-H youth. $500 registration fee. You can find the link to this application by visiting the growing Chatham newsletter. Attention 4-H members, there's a new state and district officer position. A member engagement officer position is opened. The member engagement officer will have both an inward and outward facing position. To find out the responsibilities of this position, just visit the growing Chatham newsletter. 4-H district officer applications are due for youth ages 13 to 18 years old who are interested in running for a 4-H district office. Please be mindful of the following information and deadline. Youth may run for North Carolina district president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, reporter, or member engagement. Please feel free to reach out if you should have any questions. All applications will be due to the Chatham County Extension Office by February 22, 2022 at 5 p.m. This is a firm deadline for youth wishing to run for 4-H district officer. You can find the link in the Growing Channel newsletter for the application. Here are some 4-H programs to be on the lookout for next year. The 4-H Pen Pal Project. The 4-H Pen Pal Program is a great opportunity for 4-H youth. The flyer and the document can be found in the Growing Chatham newsletter. This experience is for 4-H members only and registration has been closed, but if you are interested, we encourage you to look into this opportunity for the 2023 year. The National 4-H Conference offers opportunities for youth to learn, practice, and apply civic engagement skills through workshops, roundtable discussions, agency briefings, and more. These unique and engaging experiences would not be possible without the youth leadership team and roundtable collegiate facilitators who provide leadership to conference activities and events. Today, we are excited to release the youth leadership team application and roundtable collegiate facilitator application. We look forward to working with your land-grant institution to recruit qualified, committed, and diverse individuals to apply and participate in this leadership experience. You can find the link with more details in the growing Chatham newsletter. 4-H Achievement Night recognition submission forms are due by February 11th. 4-H Achievement Night is right around the corner for this year's virtual event, which will be held February 25th at 6 p.m. Please use the link that can be found in the Growing Chatham newsletter to update your youth's achievement and awards so that your youth can be recognized at this year's 
4-H Achievement Night. Responses must be submitted by February 11th for your child to be recognized. We would be thrilled to have you join us as we celebrate the wonderful achievements of our Chatham County 4-H members from this past year. Again, the date is Friday, February 25th, 2022 at 6 p.m. via Zoom. This is a virtual event. Registration is required to obtain a Zoom link for that evening. You may click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter that states click here to pre-register for 4-H Achievement Night. Excellent Explorers! 4-H Chicken Chain Interest Meeting is coming up February the 9th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. To participate, you must attend the mandatory interest meeting via Zoom again on February the 9th at 6.30 p.m. Any 4-H youth ages 5 to 18 is invited to participate. There will be an upcoming chicken pullet show where the youth receive day-old chicks, then raise them to show at our October show. Youth gain valuable skills and responsibility, life cycles, animal husbandry, and money and budget management. To register, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and click on the link. For any questions, you can contact Chatham County 4-H by calling 919-279-5843. February is known as the month to show love to others. So show some love to friends and neighbors. Valentine's Day is a great time to pledge your heart to show some love to friends and neighbors. So check out Craft Ideas for Inspiration in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Just click on the link that states click here to access these fun and simple crafts. Kaylee Lawi, Community Resource Development 4-H Youth Development Extension Agent, has some news she'd like to share. Hello all. As many of you already know, I'm originally from Moore County. It has been a dream of mine to work in my home county. I've been offered the opportunity to not only work in my home county, but to continue my work with NC 4-Hers. This is truly a dream come true for me. I'm excited to announce that beginning February 7th, I will start my new position of 4-H Extension Agent in Moore County. However, this decision is bittersweet. As I move closer to one family, I will also be leaving my Chatham County 4-H family. To my 4-Hers, their families, 4-H volunteers, colleagues, and community partners, I want to say thank you. You have supported me and encouraged me as a CRD 4-H agent here, and for that, I cannot thank you enough. I have made lifelong friendships that I know will continue past this chapter of my life. 4-Hers, I know you will continue to make the best better, and I am so proud of you. I couldn't have asked for a better group of youth to work with. I wish you all the best moving forward, and I cannot wait to see you continue to grow as the years go by. Remember that this is not goodbye, but simply an I will see you later. Thank you, Chatham County 4-H, for everything. Don't forget to keep in touch. Kaylee, thank you so much for everything that you brought to Chatham County. We wish you the best of luck as you start your new adventure at home in Moore County. Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 222 to access the stories and links in the 4-H section of the Growing Chatham newsletter. All right, we're going to move on to Matt Jones to see what he has to offer this month to our home gardeners and landscapers. Growing your own vegetable transplants from seed can give you a head start on the growing season and access to varieties not commonly found as transplants at garden centers. Join Matt Jones, Extension Horticulture Agent, for a webinar for home and community gardeners on planting and establishing vegetables from seed. This webinar is scheduled for February 21st, 2022 from 5.30 p.m. until 7 p.m. Participants will learn about seed biology, vegetable variety selection, growing media and containers, growing conditions, and diagnosing common problems. You may click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to register for this webinar. If you should have a question, feel free to contact Matt Jones by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Attention landscapers, grounds and turf managers, and greenhouse and nursery producers. 
The 2022 Chatham Landscape and Green Industry Webinar Series is coming up. In lieu of our annual in-person conference, North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center is hosting a series of free online webinars by North Carolina State Extension staff and local industry experts. The webinars provide continuing education and recertification credits for green industry professionals, including landscapers, grounds and turf managers, and greenhouse and nursery producers. Home gardeners and those involved in the management of HOA areas are also welcome to participate. Please note, to comply with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and North Carolina Landscape Contractor Licensing Board requirements for earning continuing education credits virtually, license holders will need to have a working video webcam so that we can monitor active participation. Here's the schedule of webinars, February 2nd from 9 a.m. until 11 11 a.m. Top Landscape Turf Insects of 2021. Next, on February 16th, 2022, from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m., Landscape Business Problem Solving. The last webinar will be held on February 23rd from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m., which will provide an update on the spotted lanternfly. For more details, such as what credits are earned from each webinar and to register for the webinar, just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 222. Agriculture Sustainable Organic Production Extension Agent Debbie Roos shares with us information about an Extension Farm Tax Webinar. Register now for Extension's Farm Tax Webinars. The North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center will offer a Farm Tax Webinar series as part of its Enhancing Sustainability series starting on February 15th and ending in early March. All webinars will be from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. The target audience, farmers, vegetables and fruits, cut flowers, livestock, hemp, row crops, nursery growers, beekeepers, and aquaculture producers. Coming up February 15th, 2022 is the Farm Tax and Business Info 101. February 22nd, 2022 is Schedule F Income. February 24th, 2022, Schedule F Expenses. March 8th, 2022 Sales and Property Tax Issues for Farmers. For the agenda and registration information, just click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. If you are a hemp grower, Debbie wants you to be aware that all North Carolina hemp growers must now be licensed through the USDA. As of January 1, 2022, all hemp growers in North Carolina must be licensed through the USDA National Hemp Program, the North Carolina Industrial Hemp Pilot Program, which was overseen by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services under the direction of the North Carolina Industrial Hemp Commission ended on D. December 31, 2021. If you have a North Carolina Industrial Hemp Commission issued hemp growers license, it is no longer valid even if it was not due to expire yet. You should not have any hemp growing in the field, greenhouse, or grow room at this time unless you have a USDA hemp production license. You may still have hemp in your possession that you grew in 2021 or earlier under your North Carolina issued license. That is fine. Although, Debbie suggests that you keep a copy of your 2021 one North Carolina Hemp Growers License on hand in case there is any question about it. But if you had hemp growing in the greenhouse or grow room in December of 2021 and it is still growing there now, you should have a USDA hemp production license. For more information, please click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. There is a farmer survey for new web-based tool. Farmers and other agricultural professionals are invited to fill out an online survey to help North Carolina State Extension develop a new web-based tool. The purpose of the study is to identify agricultural and community stakeholder needs and interests related to climate information uses, needs, and decision-making for the purpose of informing the development of the Future Ready Farmers' Almanac, which will present climate predictions tailored to agricultural producers. For more information, just click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Now you can view recordings of Blueberry Production Webinars.
the Chatham County Center North Carolina Cooperative Extension conducted two blueberry production webinars in November and December of 2021. North Carolina State Extension presenters Bill Klein and Debbie Roos discussed general blueberry production and blueberry pest and diseases. Over 400 participants from around the state attended the live webinars. In an online evaluation following the webinars, 97% of the participants reported that they would be able to improve blueberry production as a result of what they learned in the webinars. The webinars were recorded Recorded and can be viewed online from the Growing Small Farm website. You can find that link in the Growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu Growing Chatham 222. Christina Britt, Agriculture, Livestock, and Forages Extension Agent, is excited to announce the upcoming Piedmont Regional Beef Conference. The Piedmont Regional Beef Conference will be held on March the 3rd, 2022 at the Chatham County Agriculture and Conference Center. Registration is required and must be submitted by February the 18th. You can find the link to register online in the growing Chatham newsletter. Join North Carolina Cooperative Extension for the Basic Fertilization for Forages webinar. When was the last time you did a soil test of your pasture or hayfield? Do you know what you're looking at when you get the results? Can you afford to put out the recommended amount of fertilizer or can you afford not to? Is your soil pH in the ideal range for growing your type of forages? Get the answer to these questions and more virtually on Thursday, February 10th at 6.30 p.m. through a Zoom session with Davidson, Davey, Forsyth, and Yadkin County Centers of North Carolina Cooperative Extension. This webinar is open to the public. For more details and to register, just click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. There will be a lambing and kidding workshop coming up Saturday, February 12, 2022, from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. This event will be held at the Small Ruminant Educational Unit in Raleigh, North Carolina, hosted by North Carolina Cooperative Extension and North Carolina Sheep Producers Association. Spaces are limited. The cost is $15 per person. You can register online just by visiting the Growing Chatham newsletter. It's time to update the 2022 Chatham County Hay Directory. This hay directory is provided as a service to hay producers. In order to be included in the new hay directory, please complete the form that you can find in the growing Chatham newsletter. The hay directory will be posted on the Chatham County Extension page once it is complete. Do you currently have poultry or interested in getting some birds? Just click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to complete the 2022 Chatham County Backyard Flock Interest Form. That will help Christina in designing future programs about backyard birds. To access the links or to read more about the upcoming webinars, just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 222. Ginger Cunningham, County Extension Director and Extension Agent, 4-H Youth Development and Forestry, shares with us February Forestry Webinars. Coming up February 1st, 2022, from 1 until 2 p.m., Timber Management, Expenses and Deductions. The next webinar will be held February the 8th, 2022 from 1 until 2 p.m., keeping more of your timber income following a timber sale. The next forestry webinar will be held February 15th, 2022 from 1 until 2 p.m., coping with losses from nature and chance. The last webinar in February will be held February 17th, 2022 from 12 until 1.30 the United States Forestry Service Fueling Collaboration, Fire and the Wildland Urban Interface of the Eastern United States. You must register for these webinars. You can find the links in the Growing Chatham newsletter. The last item that Ginger would like to share with you this month is tax tips for forest landowners for the 2021 tax year. Updated federal forestry tax tips were just recently released for 2021. Just click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter for the updated federal forestry tips by visiting go.com ncsu.edu forward slash growing chatham 222. Kaylee Lawey, Extension Agent, Community Resource Development, 4-H, Youth Development from North Carolina A&T University, shares with us the American Rescue Plan Act. The American Rescue Plan Act provides state 
local, territorial, and tribal governments with a one-time infusion of funds to meet pandemic response needs and rebuild a stronger, more equitable economy as the country recovers. Within the types of eligible uses, Chatham County has broad flexibility to decide how best to use this funding to meet the needs of our community. Join us to share your thoughts about how we can maximize the impact of Chatham County's ARPA funds. Each person will have five to ten minutes to share their thoughts with staff. This event will be held February 3rd, 2022, 6 p.m. at the Raffi Building at the Dan Pollitt Conference Center, 274 Pittsburgh Elementary School Road, Pittsburgh, North Carolina, 27312. Child care and activities will be provided for the duration of the meeting. We realize that not everyone will feel comfortable meeting in person, so we also have an online survey that folks can complete to share their thoughts. It will be available on the Chatham County ARPA webpage on February 1st. You can find that link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Tara Gregory, Extension Agent, Family and Consumer Sciences, shares with us information about food safety after a power outage. Wondering how long your food is safe after a power outage? Foods kept in a closed refrigerator can be safe up to four hours. Once you're able to open your refrigerator or have hit the four-hour mark, check the temperature of foods with the food thermometer and toss anything that has been over 40 degrees Fahrenheit for more than two hours. Foods in a full freezer that was kept closed can be safe for 48 hours. 24 hours if the freezer was half full. The appliance itself and the way food is stored can affect these guidelines. The best way to know if a food was kept at a safe temperature is to use a thermometer. If you have a freezer thermometer and it reads 40 degrees or below, the food is safe and may be refrozen. Without a thermometer in the freezer, check each food. If the food still contains ice crystals or is 0 degrees Fahrenheit or below, it is safe to refreeze or cook. For more information or clarification, you can contact NC safe plates at ncsu.edu. Can you use snow to store food when the power is out? In emergencies, you can safely store food in snow banks by monitoring the internal temperature of the food, 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. When storing food outside, avoid placing food in direct sunlight. Place food in containers that will protect the food from contamination as well as from wild animals. If the temperature of the food is above 41 degrees for more than four hours, discard using our keep or toss guidelines. Tara offers up some recipes for when the power is out. These two simple and nutritious meals can be made with food in your pantry. No cooking needed. So visit the Growing Chattel newsletter for the banana wraps recipe and the white bean tuna dip. For those of you over the age of 60, did you know that medical expenses over $35 can be deducted when you apply for food and nutrition benefits? If you're in need of a little extra assistance with buying groceries these days, consider contacting More in My Basket to see if you're eligible. Just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to see if you meet the general eligibility requirements. You can find their contact information in the newsletter as well. Are you looking for Tara? Last month, Tara announced that she would be on maternity leave until the late spring, early summer time frame. If you should have a food safety question, please contact RH County's Family and Consumer Sciences agent, Evelise Collin. Her contact information can be found in the Growing Chatham newsletter. We're already counting down to the days when Tara returns. While we're waiting, this is what we can look forward to when Tara returns in the late spring, early summer time frame. Blood pressure management classes that include nutrition guidance, cooking demonstrations, and kitchen gadgets for you to cook at home and money to spend at the farmer's market. Sign up to take place in May 2022. Raising Good Eaters, a class series about feeding babies and toddlers. Pressure cooker instruction and demonstration classes. More opportunities to learn about cooking local, seasonal foods, and preserving foods at home safely. So, starting in late spring, early summer, keep your eyes open for posts from Tara announcing these upcoming programs. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to watch the Homegrown series 
unboxing meal delivery kits and food safety. Visit the Grow Aid Chatham newsletter for the recipes and the link to the Homegrown series video and more by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 222. This month, Brandy King, County Extension Administrative Assistant, shares with us how to save money heating your home this winter. Here are a few ways you can save money heating your home. Do a home energy audit. Seal air leaks. Check ducts for holes and gaps. Bring your insulation up to Department of Energy recommended levels. Lower your thermostat. Check the filters. Consider a budget billing program. Comparison shop. To access resources and the link to the Federal Trade Commission Consumer Information website, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 222. Join me as we take a walk down memory lane and a Bear Creek man is recognized for making history in Chatham County and in North Carolina. I came across this article the other day while searching newspapers.com. To my surprise, this Bear Creek resident not only made history in Chatham County, but made history in North Carolina as the first African-American tree farmer. This article was published in the March 16, 1961 edition of the Chatham Record. E.T. Hanner of Bear Creek was the first black farmer in North Carolina to win the title of tree farmer. J.A. Turner, who was a Chatham County farm agent, presented Hanner with a metal sign which designated his farm as a tree farm. Hanner had over 30 acres of forest land in 1961. Mr. E.T. Hanner passed away December 18th, 2019. Now, according to his obituary, before retiring, he expanded this self-employment as a tree farmer to become an independent forest contractor. E.T. was passionate about his community and his public service to Chatham County. The travels and experiences he shared with others in the community while he served as a former president of the Bonley Bear Creek Savings Club was a source of pleasure for him. He has won numerous awards, including the Chatham Catalyst Award, presented by the Chatham Economic Development Corporation, the Social Service Award, an award from the Black Historical Society of Chatham County, and a NAACP Humanitarian Award. He was also a former Chatham County Commissioner, and he served on various boards, including the Council on Aging, Department of Social Services, Chatham Lee Credit Union, and the Galston Medical Center. Mr. Hanner was an amazing person. Not only was he a tree farmer, but he was also a community leader that many folks looked up to for guidance. A person who loved to sing and was just a ray of sunshine that lit up any room that he entered. To read the full story, just visit the growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 222. From our community partners. Chatham County Public Health Department introduces a new COVID-19 information tool as virus trends continue to rise. Testing is still available across the county. To access the new COVID-19 information tool, just click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Alert Chatham! Alert Chatham is a program provided by Chatham County Emergency Management that allows you to receive notifications via phone calls, text messaging, email, and more based on locations you select. This system will be used to notify you about imminent threats to health and safety, as well as other notifications that may affect your home or workplace. Authorities may use the system to send notifications regarding flooding, gas leaks, police activity, and other events, which you may need to take action to protect yourselves, your family, or your co-workers. Chatham County uses the Code Red Mass Notification System platform to send notifications. The system is used countywide and may be requested by authorized officials with Chatham County, or the towns of Golston, Pittsburgh, or Siler City. It is activated through a secure portal by Chatham County Communications or Emergency Management. To access the Alert Chatham, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and click on the link. This is just a reminder that face coverings are required when entering any Chatham County government building. Thank you for your cooperation. Extension is everywhere! So click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to see where you can find all of the latest North Carolina Cooperative Extension news. 
Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 222. That's all the updates I have this month. I hope you have a great February. Don't forget to snuggle up with the one you love on that special day. I'll be back in March to provide you with the latest updates from the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center. Until then, take care. I'm Tiffany Hancock.